So you notice that this uh, did indeed close well above the moving average, uh, but you would have had to sit through uh, from peak to valley here 256 points worth of drawdown, uh, putting you just under water for the overall trade. Okay, so uh, you just, did I disable this chat? No, Janet, you have not missed the money management part. Um, so you got to take that into consideration. And this is something we talked about in Dallas, that the, a trend-following system can have a lot of volatility. And you're seeing the, the, the evidence here. Uh, you're looking at a position that from uh, the worst entry was up 215 pips and then had uh, more than 100% drawdown. Very, very common with trend-following kind of systems. British pounds, nothing really uh, earth-shattering going on here, depending again on how aggressive you are. There was a hand entry uh, back here mid-November, which at this point is still in the black. I'm just recapping all of this, uh, hopefully quickly enough to get to the meat of this. Uh, Canadian dollar, nothing really going on. Let me load this up. You can see no real formation. We're starting to get a hand over here, depending on uh, how the market closes out. There was a hand that formed right here. So again, depending on uh, where you were looking to get, get in or whether or not you were trading the Canadian, uh, very nice entry over here, which is basically break even. Swiss franc, only real entry down here where we have a hand. Uh, the rest of the stuff is well away from the market other than this one right here. Okay? So that's, oops, one more Japanese yen. This is, uh, you know, one of my favorite trades. This one's been working out very well. Here was, uh, depending on your exit, there was a close, close just above the moving average. Uh, first entry was uh, back here. Second entry, entry back here. Third entry was right here, final uh, close on the trade, right about 109. So you can see the last position basically broke even, slight loss uh, before the exits. And again, on a discretionary basis, I mean, if you look at this, uh, all the engineers listening might say, well, hey, this didn't close exactly above the line. Um, I don't know about you, but that's, that's close enough for me. That's above the line. <laughs> I am not going to quibble over, what, one or two pips, I think, maybe five at the most. It's just not worth it. So very nice trade, closed out uh, with a very big profit. Typical of trend following, uh, just in general. So money management. There are a couple of things that I want to talk about in terms of money management, but uh, I think the the clearest picture here, uh, oops, was on the New Zealand dollar. Okay, we have, we have a market that's trading in a sideways range. Okay, hopefully everybody can see how, uh, this is something that I call the market is boxing out. Boxing out. Sorry, that's really messy. And this comes from, uh, you know, this is shaped kind of like a rectangle. Um, I just like the term boxing out. I think it sounds cool. And it's, it's pretty typical of markets that are in two stages. And I know this might sound like gobbledygook at first, but let me explain. Uh, the first stage is a market, hang on, there we go. The, the first stage is a market that is in the process of reversing the trend, okay? Uh, so one possibility is that you're seeing resistance forming up here, and this is what's called a distribution. There's also a concept um, which was, was popularized by uh, market profile, yeah, those of you that are familiar with that, uh, which actually brings in ideas from back in the 20s and 30s from a guy named Wyckoff. 
And it's possible that this is a re-accumulation. In other words, people are buying. And then it was pretty much over. 